why I absolutely love the Triumph Daytona 955i. There is quite a lot to not like about this bike, as we've discussed in previous videos, you know, the ergonomics, I mean, they're really bad on this bike, guys, but it is a super sport after all. And, you know, the experience for me is worth it. I'm not gonna lie, guys, I've been riding this bike. Since I've got it, I've been riding this bike pretty much solely. I've not really touched the ZR or the ZH2. I did, I did do a video recently on the YFE's Ninja 125, but for the most part, I'm riding this bike. And I know that a lot of it comes down to the fact that, you know, because she is an old bike and I want them to live, I want, I want them to survive. I want to enjoy them as much as possible. Because there is a lot to love about old bikes. Again, we've done videos about the ZX9 and why that was absolutely fantastic as well. Definitely go and check that one out. Definitely go and check out our review of the Triumph Daytona 955i. But the thing is, it's, it's all well and good going over a review, talk about the specs of the bike. But it's only when you really start to ride it over a number of hours is when you really start to get to know it and you really start like unlocking what the bike is is one what it's capable of but also unlocking experiences that you may not have never had before in so many ways this bike has got so much fun factor and no, it, it doesn't have the most torque in the world, like I like to have. I do like to have a lot of bottom end torque because you really get to enjoy the power of the bike at low speeds. You don't have to be doing over 60, 70 mile an hour to start enjoying the bike. But this bike does have a nice amount of horsepower coming in at just after 5,000 RPM, which means that it is still thoroughly enjoyable. It's not like a modern, Fireblade R1 ZX10R or a Jixxon 1000, it's not like that. Where you know it redlines at 15,000 RPM and you've got to get it up to 10,000 RPM before you start experiencing any power. It's not like that at all. This bike has got usable power for street riding, that's what makes it really fun. When I had to go on the ZX10R recently, I really enjoyed it. But the fact that I had to be doing over 60, 70 mile an hour before I could start experiencing the full power of the bike, it literally had nothing. Less than 10,000 RPM, it had nothing. No power whatsoever, whereas this bike, it's got buckets of power. And I'll tell you what, I think in a 0-60 run, I think this, and probably even the ZX9, could beat the ZX10R. Seriously. Because you have to get up to 60 mile an hour before you start getting towards the power button. <laughs> I think, uh, whilst I was riding that bike around, I think I managed to get it to 100 mile an hour in first gear. Or at least close to that. It, it was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. A ton in, a in, in, in first gear. Absolutely outrageous. Whereas this thing is geared far more reasonably. You can get up to, to 65 mile an hour in first gear. It would have been nice if it could get up to that 70 mile an hour, but then again, you'd be losing a bit of that torque. So no, I like it. This bike I think is geared very, very well for street riding, genuinely. <laughs> Yeah, man. And despite the fact that it is a little heavier than modern day super sports, you can really flick this bike into corners, seriously. You can have a real little sporty experience on the street with this bike. You don't have to take it to a drag day to really enjoy it, really enjoy its sporty nature. And I mean, it does feel like you're, you're in like a Superman position on this bike. You really are reaching for the handlebars and there's a lot of pressure on your hands, but 
it more than makes up for it. And the fun factor, it really does. And because this bike has got a lovely amount of torque, just after 5,000 RPM, pulling power wheelies on this thing is very, very doable and very easy. So, and yeah, you don't have to be going ridiculously fast to do the wheelies neither. Very, very good, you guys. And I know, I know about the, uh, the comfort is one of those things that I would really struggle with. So riding this bike over a long period of time is very difficult. I've been riding this bike for over an hour now today and it is hard, but when you're enjoying it, you kind of forget about it. And that's what I love about a fun motorcycle. It doesn't matter about the ergonomics because if you're really enjoying yourself, you totally forget about it and the fun factor is all that really matters. A really, really good bike. And I found out recently as well that this bike has got forged pistons, not cast ones. Which means that it's able to push up to that 140, 145 horsepower, I think it is, might be 147 horsepower. But way more than the speed triple over the same year with the same engine, which is producing, I think, up to 120 horsepower. So yeah, man, this, this bike has got a lot to offer. Not just a track day rider, but a street, a totally street rider like myself. But if you did want to track day this thing, I think you'd absolutely love it. Really, really good. And the fact that you can tune this bike yourself, that is incredible, man. Because it has a, a standard OBD2 connector, the same as you'd get for a car. So even just with that, you can erase, you can look at and erase codes yourself with a car scanner, which trust me, you can't really do on most bikes. <laughs> but because you have access to the ECU as well, that way you can use software on your laptop to connect it up to the bike and do some tuning, some ECU tuning yourself. You can manually tune the bike. Not that I would recommend it, if this is your daily rider and what have you, I wouldn't recommend you tune the bike yourself. You might blow it up. You might end up running it too lean or too rich. You might blow it up. But it does have that option and any, any tuner would probably be happy to do it because it would be really straightforward to do. And you could eke out maybe a little bit of extra horsepower out of this bike. Especially if you decide to put on an aftermarket exhaust system. I'm seriously considering. Seriously considering. But what, what a bike, man. The fact that you've got power, you've got nimbleness. This is a, a track bike with headlights. It really is. And if you like that kind of experience, well, I think you're going to like this more than something like an R1 because you've got power. You've actually got usable power. And don't get me wrong, you do get more as you go through the rev range. This bike produces more, that is most of its power after 11,000 RPM. It's stupid. So you are still getting that super sport-like experience where you're producing peak horsepower right at the very top end of the rev range. But you've got a load of usable, lovely, nice, usable torque lower down. This is an incredibly fun bike, guys, and I, it really has got me curious about what other Euro bikes have to offer, especially after I had a go on an Aprilia RS660 recently. I thought that bike was fantastic, despite the fact that it was just a parallel twin. That was, again, another bike that had so much to offer. It was so much fun. Genuinely fun. And this bike absolutely loves to rev out, man loves to rev out. <laughs> if only I could do it on, on these kinds of roads with no traffic. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> there you go. See? Alcy so loves to rev out. Yeah, this is a great engine, man. I, I love this engine. I love the way this bike feels as well, despite the fact that it is a little bit heavier than the competition. 
at the time and, and now of course is still plenty nimble enough. Seriously, very, very good. Man, and, and, and the fact that I wasn't happy with this bike when I first bought it. Oh, criminal. Unbelievable, man. But yeah, th this bike is awesome. I'm enjoying it so much, guys, that... Uh, oh, well, like I said, I'm not riding my other bikes at the moment. Because I'm enjoying this one so much. No, it doesn't have the most torque in the world. It doesn't have anywhere near as much torque or as much power as a ZH2 or as a ZZR, but... As we find in a lot of ways, whenever we're doing our ride reviews, whenever we're taking a look at the new bikes that are coming out these days, power isn't everything. MT-09 doesn't have the most power in the world, but it feels like a really fun bike to ride. And this is the same, guys. This, this is the same. Doesn't have the most power in the world, but it doesn't need it. Wow. A lot of fun and a lot, a lot of power as well. Definitely is no slouch, this bike, all right? <laughs> And it, I think, you know, despite the fact that it's down 50 horsepower on the likes of the ZH2 and the ZZR, I think it's nipping at the heels of those bikes, seriously. In terms of 0 to 60 in particular. I mean, quarter mile, the ZZR would, would run away. And the ZH2 would run away against this bike, but... 60 mile an hour is, is important for the most part, you know? When you're doing, when you're thinking about street riding, 0 to 60 is the most important. <laughs> So much lean. Didn't think he was going to stop that guy. Uh, kid on the bike. I had to move myself over on the roundabout. Genuinely didn't think he was going to stop. <laughs> uh, what a bike, man. What a bike. And I think we, I did shoot another video today about the mistakes I made and how, you know, the reliability of this bike might not be 100%, but these are old bikes. They all carry their own risks. But if you're able to enjoy the bike, and that's what this bike has a lot of, just fun factor, that is what is more important, all right? Reliability, if you are buying an old bike, I kind of expect you to have another one, one that is more reliable, so you're not missing out on riding too much if the bike does decide to break. But if you have an old bike, or, or, or if you've never had an old bike, rather, you definitely should consider it. There's so much out there. There's so much out there, guys. And they're really cheap. Loads of fun. What more do you want? Honestly, absolutely fantastic. What a bike. Absolutely love it. But thank you ever so much for joining me on today's ride out. I hope you've enjoyed it and if you're looking to buy a Daytona 955i of this generation, they're all pretty damn good. So don't be afraid to look at look at buying one. They're going for way less than two grand these days if you're looking at this sort of era. 2003, 2002, 2001. They're all fuel injected. Very, very good bikes, man, seriously. And I'd heavily recommend it. But thank you ever so much again for watching today's video. Go ahead and leave that like, hit that subscribe button and that notification button if you've enjoyed it with me. And we'll catch you all in the next video, everyone. Take care. Ride safe.